I got myself some random QI charger stuff off eBay to play with and um, I got one of these little mats and one of these little adapter charging plates that you put inside your uh, existing phone that adapts it to um, contactless charging and the idea is I've put an LED in this one to demonstrate the idea is that when you bring it near the charging plate it couples across and it powers the phone to charge it up and it means you don't have to plug your phone in to charge it but I have to say so far I'm not too impressed at the efficiency because um, typically speaking this, this LED is running about 130 milliamps on the 5 volt output from this and if you're right up against it it manages at best just less than 50% efficiency but if you're a modest distance away to the point it's just about to go out um, it draws almost 800 milliamps from the USB supply here to power the 130 milliamp LED. That's not too impressive. But anyway, let's uh, take a wee look at uh, what's in here. In fact, let's uh, before I do that, uh, I'll try plug it into another one I've got here and see how it fares. So, yeah, let's see if I put it right up to it. It's getting a fairly similar um, result. I'm just waiting for the current display to come back in this. 260, yeah, it's coming about uh, at direct contact. It's around 50% coupling efficiency. Hmm, not overly impressed. But anyway, let's take a wee look at this in further detail. I've already opened this one, as you could probably guess. And what's quite unusual is that they've got this, uh, the coil, which has got a ceramic, a ferrite plate on the back of it. They've got it folded down uh, in contact with components in the circuit board. And if you take a meter and you measure, let's get the uh, meter over, just shove that out of the way, and you measure the resistance of these plates, then they are conductive. I mean, that's about 100 kilo ohm, and then if you go closer to about there, it's still, 100, it's still almost 100 kilo ohm. It's a very odd characteristic. It must be almost a, a surface resistance. I'm not 100% sure. And likewise, when you go to this one um, and measure across like that, it's about 100 kilo ohm again. And then, yeah, it, all, it just seems to vary in this sort of 80 to 100 kilo ohm range. Very odd. Uh, it doesn't seem to matter how close you go in them. In fact, let's, uh, let's see. Yep, see, look how close they are. Yeah, and it's still about the 100k. Very odd. Anyway, the ferrite back is, it basically forms, that's the core of the transformer. And then you've got the um, coil on it. And this is really quite a heavy coil. This had a really annoying double-sided sticky pad that's very hard to remove in the back of it. Um, so that's why most of it's still on. And this one, uh, I think the coils are just fundamentally the same here. They must come from a common manufacturer. Um, on the receiver, this plastic um, sticker, this a little thing that goes in the back of the phone, on the back is the coil that I was expecting, a dedicated chip. Now, that was really hard to read, that chip. Um, I was looking at it through the microscope, and it, it's got very fine numbers on a very mottled background, very hard to read. I managed to get the first few digits, and uh, by doing a bit of research online, I found that um, it's possibly a Texas Instruments QI chip, or QI chip. Uh, rather annoyingly now, I've, I've been calling these QI, um, because it has been capital Q, capital I, but um, apparently some people call it QI, uh, capital Q, small i, but yeah, I'm going to call it QI. Um, so, yeah, and it sounds like it's a lot more complex than you'd think, because... Um, it, apparently there's feedback between the transmitter and receiver using the uh, QI version 1.1 communication protocol. So um, there is a modest level of communication. That might be, because it's fairly high power, um, it's capable of putting out 5, 10 watts probably. Um, hold on, let's see, what, what does that say? Does it say, oh, supports up to 1.5 amps charging current, this one. So that's even worse. That's huge. Okay, so that's probably to stop uh, little instants happening when you put inductive objects on um, and it tries to pump current into them. Um, yes, 
because these ones I did notice um, it'll pulse the current demand will just pulse I could I could see the little blue LED on the USB power supply just when this was plugged in it would just be blinking as if it was just looking it was interrogating it was just sending out a signal looking for data but not actually turning the current on and it must wait till this must get the little pulse of data charge up and um, send data back just by maybe modulating a load on the coil and then this detects that modulation and it um, it knows to actually put out the full current this is interesting now this also has a ferrite type layer, very crackly and brittle. It's just a thin film of this sort of ferrite stuff um, on the back and that must effectively, when they're close together, that must form the transformer cores effectively um, with the two windings in between. Um, the range isn't huge, it's about a centimetre and really by the time you're up at a centimetre, which is roughly about, oh, about, it's a bit, uh, it's between a quarter and three eighths of an inch. Um, and when you get to that level, it's actually gone really inefficient. It's really drawing quite a lot of current. So, yes, novel. But maybe I'll just stick to plugging my phone in. It's probably more efficient. But uh, an interesting sort of thing to play with. Now, look at the circuitry. This one has a chip in it, which is very anonymous. The chip has a number, um, from what I can read, CMC Tech, CMC T-E-K, CE81A and that's a very anonymous company. It's a company called China Micro Chip and I wonder if that's uh, a wee play on Arizona Microchip, uh, the people who make the PIC microcontrollers. Um, so their chips, they have no data on their website at all regarding these uh, chips. It's all very vague, it's phone us for information sort of thing like that. So I get the feeling that that's probably a microcontroller and it's uh, basically uh, the software has been written for it, and it's been um, it's been used to actually do the protocol emulation. Now the driving for the coil itself has four high power transistors, which I'm guessing are going to be driving this coil in an H bridge configuration. They're going to be able to push pull positive negative positive negative on, on opposing uh, ends of the coil. And these uh, capacitors are also seemingly in series with that, as far as I can see. And that makes sense, because um, that will portion the current through. It means that if you have a little electronic burp, it's not going to cause any major problems with current flow. Um, and the same uh, applies to this one. You've got the, the series of transistors. This one's got a chip, which uh, looks as though it could be this one, but it's got the number either scrubbed off or it's never had the number at all. It's got a very matte surface with no numbers on it. It uh, does have an LM324 marked chip, uh, which uh, LM324 is a op amp or a multiple op amp chip. I wonder what they're using that for. But yes, they're interesting. They're they're not too expensive to buy these bits to play about with on eBay, and uh, certainly it gives the op it gives the po opens possibilities for making things like um, inductively coupled uh, lights where you can just place the light on a surface and it will suddenly burst into life and light. Um, yeah, interesting enough. I originally had a thought that this might just be very simple technology like the um, the toothbrushes you get, uh, the uh, inductive charging toothbrushes, because they basically use just a very simple oscillator circuit um, mains powered oscillator circuit in the base and then there's a magnetic coil and I think there's a core up the middle and when you sit the toothbrush over to recharge it's got another coil that then goes over that core and it couples the energy into that and I think they, well they certainly aren't intelligent I don't think, they may have probably current regulation in the base unit but a very simple form but um, I don't think it's considered so critical that they have to be so energy efficient, you know, just uh, not putting energy out when they're um, when they're not actually being used. Because in the case of the uh, electric toothbrush, um, it's probably just a slow 20 milliamp or something like that charging current that's being passed through it. But yeah, these are interesting. They're cheaply available on eBay, just the bits and pieces, so it's, uh, it's worth playing about with.